Hey, folks, welcome to InTheMoneyStocks.com's live trading action video. My name is Gareth Soloway, Chief Market Strategist here. Today's date is Thursday, March 10th, 2016. Well, folks, take a look at the markets today. You're looking at the SPY, which again is a mirror of the S&P 500. It's the SPY or S&P 500 ETF. And basically what you see today is a gap higher here. Notice this trend line, all right? I want to go over all the key technical factors here that are going to enlighten you so you understand exactly what this market is doing and what it is going to do. Because I'm going to tell you the playbook. I told the playbook to our members here at InTheMoneyStocks.com weeks ago. And that's why we loaded up a ton of shorts. But bottom line is, down sloping trend line, we opened above it. We moved higher on the back of Mario Draghi. So the ECB, head of the ECB is Mario Draghi. He basically came out, lowered key interest rates to negative, uh, put the refinance rate at zero, um, pushed more stimulus into the market, going from $60 billion a month to $80 billion a month. The markets initially initially rejoiced, right? I mean, you know, the markets here in the U.S., when Bernanke was doing it, were rejoicing too. But the problem is this. It's not the same time anymore, all right? Markets are much higher than they used to be uh, when Bernanke was around. In addition, people are very concerned that if Draghi is taking these steps, which are pretty epic, well, wait a minute. Doesn't that mean maybe the global economy is in real treacherous waters? Doesn't that mean things could be much worse than the markets even know? If he's feeling like he has to, you know, increase the stimulus alone by 33%, let alone dropping the key interest rate to depositors' interest rate to negative 0.04, I mean, ridiculous. You now have to pay in Europe to have your money in the bank. My point is this, and why is he doing, wait, before we get to that, why is he, why are negative interest rates, why do the people like or, or global central banks like these negative interest rates, right? They stink for us. If I have money in the bank, I end up losing money. Well, what they're trying to do is get you to spend your money to stimulate the economy. They figure if putting money in the bank is going to get, you're going to get charged for it. Well, someone's going to say, well, instead of getting charged, I might as well just go buy that new car or go buy that house or go buy that TV. That's the idea which is kind of ridiculous to me, but so be it. Bottom line is, markets initially rejoiced, and then they started to realize what I've been saying for a while, that things are not good, that this market's going to come down. Notice how on a technical basis, you opened above this downsloping trend line, above the 200, and you got up here, but you never took out the pivot high from Friday. All right, that is very important. In fact, you went right here. Take a look at this. See this little pivot top from Monday? Monday's high, Monday's high. And look at that, right to today's high, and look at the reversal that took place. Now, the key on this reversal was, see all these moving averages here and this downsloping trend line? When we got below that, that's really where you have to understand that the market got in a bad shape. That's a bad signal right there, because here is a ton of support on a technical intraday basis. And you know, this is the 10-minute chart, just for those of you that don't know. All right, but bottom line is, when the market took this out, this breaks everything. In addition, these lows, so this is the weekly low. So if you look at all of this week, these are the lows right here, right? Pivot low, pivot low, pivot low. There's a couple sloping trend lines here I want to show you here. This one comes right from here. There's kind of, you could even make a case that there's a, a pseudo little head and shoulders here, but we won't even get into that. Here's another trend line sloping up through this pivot high to this, to this pivot low, and it goes right to this low as well. So once we took out these lines and then this, this market to me is in a point of almost no return. All right, and again, you know, there's a reason why I've shorted Amazon, I've shorted, uh, you know, multiple other stocks like uh, Netflix and other things like that, in addition, buying, you know, the QID, buying the VXX. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that I've been doing with our members here, which has been putting us in position to capitalize over the last week or so on this expected move down. Now, as we break lower, and you're getting a little bit of an intraday bounce, we are short-term oversold, but you'll break lower overall over the next few days, your first technical pivot point is going to be right here. First technical pivot point is 196.63-ish, 65-ish. That's going to be some support, but we're not going to stop there. We're going to get a bounce there, and then we're going to continue lower. Where are we going, guys? All right, there's a major level down here. This is your next spot right down here. All right, really what you're going to do is you're going to go to a couple levels. Here's number one. So after 196.63, you're going to go to this gap fill at 193.40, and then you should go test this low here at 190. All right, so again, there's a lot of downside here, folks. There is a lot. Don't let this market fool you. All right, they've gotten some people on the on the bullish bandwagon lately. You can hear in the media people are a lot more bullish lately. It's not going to last. It isn't. 
All right, we've had an epic run where the Spiders topped out at 201 from a low of 181. That was a 20-point move over a 10% move up in the markets. Bear market rallies are notoriously rip-your-face-off type rallies. But unless you take out the recent highs or the 52-week highs, it doesn't mean a hill of beans. It just doesn't. So bottom line is, I'm going to summarize right now. The bottom line is for this market, a failed attempt to break out. We got close to this high, we didn't do it, and it failed. And not only that, but now we reversed significantly to the downside. That puts more pressure to the downside overall. You're going to see more sellers in the market, generally, even though you'll get small bounces along the way. We are going to go lower. Short-term support is 196.63. It's very possible we hit that later today. Okay, in the next few days, I think you at least go down to this level here, down here, around the 193.50 level. Then we'll reevaluate. All right, but again, the angle here is Draghi pumping tons of stimulus into the European economy, you know, may help stimulate their economy, but it tells you a bigger picture about what's going on there. In addition, them basically hurting their currency, what he's doing is, is causing the, the euro to drop, is basically causing the dollar to gain strength. That's not what the people here, that's not what multinational companies in the U.S. Is, are going to help their earnings. That's going to hurt their earnings. So these factors, again, causing the market to start to panic a little bit today, not down a huge amount, three quarters of 1%, but again, look for further downside in this market in the coming days. Next week, the Federal Reserve is going to have a big decision to make. I personally can't see them raising rates after what Draghi just did, because then it's like a double, double, you know, stabbing. Right now, the dollar gained strength against the euro as Draghi did his things. But if you raise interest rates again next week, well, then it's going to happen even more. And it's going to hurt the U.S. economy. So I'm in the camp that you will not see um, Chair Yellen, Federal Reserve Chair Yellen, raise interest rates next week. I think they'll stay pat and wait and see. Okay? I want to show you one more thing. Take a quick look at this, guys. This is our website. I want to show you the track record. Take a look. Go to Research Center under Investor Trade Alerts. Click on that here, folks. And I'm logged in right now, but I can log out right now. So, again, let's go back here, folks, and just... What I want you to do is on our website, click on the Research Center. This is where we give out all these trades that I'm talking about, all these trades. Scroll down. All right, here's your seven-day free trial. Here's reviews. You can click and read all the reviews. Take a look at all the services you get included in the Research Center. This is where we put out our live trade alerts, our swing trades. And then below here, look at this, track record. That's what you want to take a look at. Click on that. Look at that, 2016 track record. You can go back as many years as you want here. But this year alone, that's what we're doing here, folks. These are third-party verified. Scroll down. You can see a couple losses there. You know, we're not perfect. No one's perfect. But the key is we have been knocking it out, the par out of the park just like we do every single year here based on the PPT methodology. It's a proprietary methodology we developed. We teach our members it here at InTheMoneyStocks.com. Hedge funds love it. They don't want us teaching it, but we do it anyways because we want the average investor to learn it, and profit for life. I mean, that's the bottom line, folks. It's all about making money for the rest of your life and retiring at your, your leisure and just living life the way you want to live it. Just making money in the market anytime you need it. All right. Come join us here at InTheMoneyStocks.com. Take the seven-day free trial to the Research Center. That's where it's at, guys.